All right. Welcome, everybody, to Standing for Truth. My name is Donnie Badinsky, and I am here with Pastor Anthony Aquino for a podcast focusing on being faithful through trials. Anthony, my brother, I appreciate you offering your time for what I believe is an important podcast. This Mm -hmm. is, as a matter of fact, the first of many podcasts on a variety of of important topics. I've got several set and scheduled already. And so I think this is a great way to kickstart this uh, new series. And to the audience, we'll typically be doing these, I think, between 4 and 4.30 and keep them around an hour to keep them digestible for you. And so, uh, Anthony, before we get directly into the topic, could you please tell us, anybody who's unfamiliar with who you are, you're True. definitely no stranger to this channel, but just a little bit about yourself and also your uh, church. Okay. Well, I, my name is Anthony Aquino. I am the pastor of Cal Allen Baptist Church in Corpus Christi. We are the oldest Baptist church west of the New Aces River, if you know where that is. And we're celebrating our 150th anniversary this year. I've been here for about seven years. I've been in uh, ministry, I guess, paid ministry for nearly 20 years now. And I got a master's of divinity with biblical languages from Southwestern Seminary. And I'm working on a doctorate of ministry now in pastoral counseling. So at Liberty University. So I've got a, my wife, high school sweetheart. She's my wife since we were, she wasn't, hasn't been my wife since we were teenagers, but uh, we met when I was 16, she was 15. So um, we've been married for 21 years now and excuse me, 20, <laughs> it's gotten trouble. Uh, 23 years now. So um, <laughs> the years fly by. They uh, do. Got, they, I think I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going on almost 10. Wow. My wife's, li- yeah. Time flies, brother. Uh, um, I've got three great uh, children. Uh, Grace Elizabeth, she's uh, at uh, College Station, go Aggies. And my two uh, wonderful sons, Vincent Cash Aquino. He is an, a, a sophomore here in high school at Cal Allen. Uh, and my son, uh, Dylan, he's a, a freshman. So, and I've got, like I said, got a great congregation here, great uh, different types of ministries. And it's just a blessing to be able to serve here at Cal Allen Baptist Church. So, Amen. I appreciate that, Pastor Aquino. Again, you're no <clears throat> stranger to this channel. You've been here many times for debates, discussions, and, uh, you know, you, you've been a blessing. Your, your ministry, everything that you do is is truly a blessing. And so as we navigate through this topic, as somebody, Pastor Aquino, who has recently had a very close loved one go to be with the Lord, I have found the most comfort and encouragement come from those who have also experienced pain, suffering, and grief in their lives. And have grown stronger and closer to the Lord because of it. And so could you tell us about your specific journey? brother? Well, definitely. I think in first Corinthians one, four, just to speak to that very briefly, Paul says that we go through these trials. We go through these times of of grief so that we can comfort others through the experiences that we have. And uh, so that brings, you know, purpose through these terrible, these times we can go through uh, whatever causes it. So the purpose of that is to be able to comfort others. Yeah. So I was about, it'll be three years ago in August. My brother, uh, uh, I called him Bubba. His name was Robert. Uh, He he was 48 years old and uh, he has four children, a wife, and he died suddenly. I mean, he, he had had some, uh, some medical issues uh, since he was a child, but nothing that was indicating he was going to pass away. And, we didn't uh, didn't expect it uh, at all, and uh, he died at, at age 48 of heart failure. Uh, technically speaking, that's what it was. He'd gone to the hospital for something, but uh, it was it was a shock. It was I got a phone call at 3 a.m. in the morning from my parents, which I knew something was up because my parents don't call me at 3 a.m. unless something's wrong. I think I even mentioned it to my wife as, she, as as I saw who was calling. I said something's not right, and uh, they told me that my brother had passed away. And uh, in that situation, uh, again, he was 48, he's four years older than me. You have sort of this triangulation of grief that you're experiencing because at the stage of life that I'm in, that you're in, Donnie, you have uh, your parents 
uh, that are uh, grieving over a loss of a child, which is, you know, obviously a terrible tragedy. And then you're also in the situation with his children, you know, uh, that are struggling with questions and, and grieving. And at the same time, you are, are also uh, grieving. And being someone who's in ministry, as you are as well, uh, oftentimes you feel like it's, you know, people don't always make you feel this way, but I often feel like I, I'm supposed to have all the answers or I should be the source of uh, anytime anyone has a question about this. But in that, in that moment of, of loss, of shocking loss, uh, you, you feel, um, well, I guess it, you know, almost helpless uh, immediately. And so uh, I, I had a doctor tell me one time I was, uh, in Arlington, Texas, a doctor that I had, Dr. Martin, I just got in a discussion with him and he said the hardest thing to be, the hardest time he has of ever being a doctor was when he was the one he was treating, he, when he was the one that was sick and he was actually treating himself or participating in his treatment. I think it was for cancer. And, um, and I just was asking him, he was kind of explaining it to me. He's like, well, that's when my education had to become real. Uh, it wasn't, you know, I was, it wasn't me treating someone else. And I think in, it's, it's a similar vein for me uh, going through this grief and having to sort of make sense of it. I'm a pastor, you know, I should have all these answers. Right. And I didn't, uh, not immediately. Right. And the only thing that the, the answer that came back was I had to come back to the scriptures. I had to come back to the hope that's laid out in the Bible. And I always believe that Donnie, don't get me wrong. I, uh, but it really made what we preach and what we teach, it had to become even more real to me uh, for, and I had to believe it all the more, the hope that uh, the scripture has for us. So uh, does that kind of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that's helpful. It's a big reason why I thought that focusing a series of programs, podcasts, mm -hmm on this topic of faithfulness through trials, through grief, through pain and suffering is so important because I do truly believe that there's a lack of education True. on this because I'm 35. I, this would be the first time I've experienced real significant mm -hmm. loss and I was not prepared nor educated on the, the symptoms of it, mm -hmm. how that would affect your body and in mind. Can you briefly speak to that? Yeah. You know, there's the different stages of grief that, that they speak about and uh, they kind of warn you about once these things happen. And I can't really say exactly when each stage took place in, in my case, but um, there's a sense in which I, I struggle with, you know, I can just tell you that I have all my life. I've kind of wrestled with, you know, depression and that that's the right word for it. So in times of grief, it's like that almost gets even more enhanced. OK. Right. And and during that time, I kind of it feels like a weight. It feels like you're uh, you. It's like a, I, as I mentioned to you, like a heavy coat that you put on and you walk around with it and everything you do, it's there with you. You can't do anything to get away from it. You go to sleep, I guess, when you're uh, sleeping. Uh, but then, as you mentioned, when you wake up, it's just it's there waiting for you again. And right. you know it. And so there's really no other way to uh, to in, in my experience to deal with that. Um, because it's, except turning to faith, because it's always there. It's an ever present reminder uh, mm -hmm. that you are sad and um, it, it physical effects of it, you know, a lot, you, trouble sleeping at times and eating, even uh, trouble eating. Um, it is a, it truly has a physical effect on you. Um, so, and, and so I, I think at first, a lot of people that go through that, because they're not necessarily educated on how they should feel or how mm -hmm. they are supposed to heal through mm -hmm. this process, they might think that what they're feeling is abnormal right. rather than the fact that it is normal. These are normal feelings. Oh, yeah. There's there's nothing off about you. And then once, once you understand that, you can begin properly healing rather right. than internalizing the feelings, internalizing the grief where it could become complicated grief. Right. It's to speak to those things, the physical effects of them, you know, with uh, Elijah, you know, he was up on the mountain, he's calling down fire. And then he has his uh, experience with uh, Jezebel and he's afraid and he's depressed and he's, and immediately uh, he, God feeds him, right? He, I don't want to get my stories mixed up here, but the ravens bring him food. 
And so in his state of depression, his state of lowliness, uh, God deals with the physical, right? So in those times of grief and depression, I remember people telling me, make sure you, you know, you, you're drinking water, take vitamins. Uh, I, I oftentimes when I do get, when I do go through periods of grief, I don't want to eat. That's changed as I've gotten older. Uh, eating has sort of replaced the not eating uh, part of grief. But that initial stage, certainly that we need to people, it's, it's a blessing if others can, you know, if you can, can, if others can remind you, if you can continue to remember to take care of those physical things because they're easily forgotten. Mm. And does that make sense? Uh, oh yeah. Well, it's, so, especially sleep's a big thing, you know, yeah. get yourself on a good schedule, a good routine right. because those symptoms are going to be that much worse. Mm -hmm and more difficult to deal with if you're only on a few hours of sleep. Exactly. And then, as you mentioned, I think the other part of it, and this is, this is complicated as well, is allowing yourself to grieve. Right. I know that sounds very simple, but I honestly, I, Donnie, I felt like I shouldn't grieve. What am I grieving for? I'm a pastor. I've done 20 funerals, uh, maybe more. Um, I have essentially, you know, they all, they're all different, it's different people, but, and, and if they're saved, the, uh, the message is that, you know, they're, they're not hurt, suffering anymore. They're, they're with the Lord. And so if you believe that, right, as I believe that, then why, why would I be grieving? Not, not grieving in these, in these serious, man, why do I have these feelings of grief? Mm -hmm. Anthony, do you not believe these things? Do you not believe what you've been preaching for all these years? Um, have you been a fraud? I mean, uh, all kinds of emotions are coming up along with the loss of your uh, of my brother, you know, that uh, the, the helping others deal with this. But then you also have the spiritual crisis that takes place at that time. And I'm sure that's true for anyone, not just pastors, but any Christian mm -hmm. is going to be dealing with the spiritual uh, crisis mm -hmm. that comes with uh, with loss and the questions that it brings. You follow me? Uh, yeah, well, I, I think those are some really important points. I'd like to showcase that just in the form of a slide where, yeah. as you so perfectly put it, Pastor Aquino, we we think, uh, sh should we be grieving? Should, you know, is, is this how we're supposed to be feeling? And I spoke at my brother's memorial, gave a speech yeah. and pointed out that it's it's OK to not be OK. Right. That's a but great I, phrase. Simple yeah. and clear. And Yeah, go ahead. No, no, th that's good. And it's, just, but at the same time, it's just not okay to stay that way. Right. And so I, what really got me through into the stage of healing is asking myself the question, what does my brother want for me? Mm -hmm. And then the answer was always the same. It was very simple. He wants me to love. He wants me to be happy. He wants me to laugh, to continue following the Lord, dream bigger, work mm -hmm. harder take care of our family. And so that made me realize, okay, it's okay to not be okay. It's just not okay to stay that way. Right. And if you could speak to this, I put a slide together on yeah. John 11, which is yeah, great. Yeah. yeah, that's a great comfort so, to me. Uh, me because, as well. Go ahead, Donnie. I don't mean to cut you off. No, but, uh, it, it, because we often, as you pointed out, should we be grieving? How should we be feeling? <laughs> because oftentimes our mind can come against us. It yeah. can trick us. Just because we get a thought doesn't mean that that thought is true. Right. right. We got to hold that thought captive. We got to ask ourselves, is this actually true? Right. And so here we have Jesus when he went to be with Mary and Martha after the death of their brother Lazarus. Mm -hmm. Jesus, God manifests in the flesh. Yes. The reason we have salvation in the first place. Jesus wept, right? Even though right. he was just about to resurrect Lazarus, and so obviously right. Jesus feels the pain, feels the grief that we feel because of death. Right? Could you speak to that, brother? Yeah. So this, why does Jesus weep? You know, there's a few questions in this in New Testament that puzzles people. What was Jesus drawing in the sand? Okay. Uh, mm. What is the thorn in the flesh that Paul was talking about specifically? And here, why did Jesus weep? And you, you know, I've heard different answers and. Well, one of them is, well, you know, he was sad for, uh, he was sad because, uh, you know, Martha was sad and, uh, and I don't know, yeah, that may be true, but I started thinking as I was going through my time of grief, as I sort of was struggling with it, I don't see why it's not best to understand it. You know, Occam's razor, the simplest explanation here is that Jesus has lost a friend. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And um, and he's sad about it, which it is. Uh, it is, you know, I guess I won't say shocking, but you're right. He's, he knows he's going to raise him from the dead. And he's telling, you know, Martha, the reality that everyone that's believed in him will be raised from the dead. But nonetheless, he does cry. He grieves. Mm-hmm. And as I was mentioning to you, I think the simplest explanation for that is he is God in the flesh. He's human. He's, he's the God man. And because of that, death is sad. In any context, you know, it is sad. And for Jesus, he's crying because of that, mm-hmm. which is which is amazing. But it also opens up the reality that if if <laughs> if we if we are saying to ourselves, how can you be this sad about this? You believe in uh, eternal life, then you come down to Jesus and you go, well, now wait a second. You know, here he is about to raise Lazarus, not permanently. We know Lazarus will die again, but nonetheless, he's right. about to call him from the grave and he's crying. And the best explanation for me is not because Martha is sad, but because he is sad. And it, right. the, you follow me? I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I think that's why death and I like to point out death for a Christian is not really death. It's just moving from one place to another uh, and a, a far better place, you know, to be absent from the body and to be right. present with the Lord. Paul, it seems that he got a glimpse of the, th- the third mm-hmm. heaven and he, he couldn't even speak about the things right. that he heard and saw. And he, he talked about, I think it's in Philippians where he would rather depart. Yeah, Philippians 1. Uh, yeah, to, to, to be with the Lord. Yeah. But but for our sakes, he'll stay right. here and, and he'll minister to us. And so I, I think the reason why death seems so final, it seems so foreign, is because God has written eternity. That's right. In, in, in our hearts. Our, our home is not here. Our hope mm-hmm. is not here. Our hope is, is, is in heaven. Pastor. Right. Exactly. And... But again, here you have the creator of the universe. That's what so uh, blows me away. And, you know, I don't want to get into the apologetic side of this, but if you're writing a fake story, you don't have your quote unquote superhero savior uh, at the death of a friend mourning. If he's the one who is, you know, if you're right, if you're making this up, you just don't have this random thing. Jesus wept. You take that out because if you and I are making this up, Donnie, we're going to ask ourselves, why is he crying? He's about mm-hmm. to raise him from the dead. Take that from the script, right? Uh, he's about to raise the guy from the dead. Why is he crying? We don't, we don't. We, Actually, we, Pastor, yeah. I'm hearing a little bit of, oh, I'm not sure God. if you can hear it on your end. It's kind of like static coming oh. from, it could, I wonder if your mic is hitting up against your shirt or Let me see. it just happens. Okay. I won't move. I'm trying to, if I <laughs> I'm not still. sure if that, yeah, that it, it wasn't happening earlier in, in the pre-show, so it could it be. Doing, I could turn it down. Is it too loud? Or no, no. Okay. It's it sounds good. It just kind of we get a, a static okay uh, sound here and there. Let me, let me try not to move as much. Is it still static? Sounds good now. Okay. So, uh, so uh, if if uh, if like as as I was mentioning, if you and I or anyone was kind of writing a story, uh, you take out the part where Jesus is crying about the death of Lazarus for whatever reason. Because it doesn't make sense to any kind of plot. But the reality is he was human. And he, as the Hebrew says, he experienced everything. He was made like his brother in every way. And if he uh, can be so, uh, if he can be moved to tears in the very moment of Lazarus' resurrection, well, then uh, there's nothing that's, we shouldn't think of it as a shameful thing or a lack of faith or um, for us to experience the, the same thing, you know, and uh and, and, um, so that's what, there's a lot of hope it's found in that chapter of John mm-hmm. chapter 11. So, so my question to you, uh, pastor Aquino, what, what would your advice be for somebody going through a storm before mm-hmm. you answer just a little bit of context to elaborate? I I've pointed out that we're all going to get scars. We're all going to get mm-hmm. marks. If you've yet to get a scar in life or you've yet to face a crossroad in your life. Just keep mm-hmm. on living because those scars will come. And so it's inevitable. And I believe we need to prepare people. We need to prepare our brothers and sisters to continue being faithful, even through trials, through pain, mm-hmm. through suffering. And so <clears throat> I like to say, when we get those scars, we have the choice to either look or view those scars as a mark of victory or, and triumph, 
mm-hmm. or a mark of setback and defeat. And so, again, Pastor, what is your advice then for somebody who's going through a storm and getting that scar? I, I guess sometimes it may even be specific to the to the trial or scar, but specifically in regards to lose a loss. Um, is that what you're wanting to? Is that what you're asking me? Or um, yeah, I, I, well, I, I think with our specific scars. Yeah. It's, it's the loss of our brothers. Sure. And, and so how do we navigate and, and journey through that process, making sure that we're staying faithful and we're moving right. forward? Well, I think, as you mentioned, is to cry, is to grieve and be sad mm-hmm. about it. And don't, don't, uh, uh, there's no, don't allow, take captive thoughts of unjust condemnation, as you mentioned. Take those captive. Uh, being sad isn't a lack of faith by any means. Paul says, you know, we grieve as not as those who have no hope, but we do grieve. And it is sad. And in fact, the fact that we are sad uh, is more testimony to the truth of Scripture, because Scripture says we should be. Scripture says that uh, these the, the trials of grief or, or loss um, are not how God intended, right? And so, if we were happy about them, if then Scripture would be untrue. So it's 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 consistent with with the Scripture and. We are not, again, we're, we're not going against the grain of faith by grieving. We are certainly consistent with it, all right? But along with that, um, as you mentioned, finding purpose uh, in and growing in our faith, growing in our Christian walk, you, there's a lots of realities that you experience when you have a, when you go through some, uh, losing someone that's close to you, losing someone unexpectedly. Right. I see it through my parents losing a child. You know, they're older, but still they experience the loss of a child that was, uh, quote unquote, untimely. And so how do you move forward in that? Well, as I mentioned in uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, I think it's 1, uh, 4, that uh, we others have comforted us. We found comfort. The Lord has comforted us so we can comfort others. And that's how we can find purpose in it. When you've truly been through something as painful as that, other people will listen to you. They really don't want to hear what you, I found that out. I mean, it's really hard to speak to certain situations uh, unless you've really you know, been through them. Uh, in that real and direct way. But when someone has, then you have a voice and they have an ear for it. And so there's purpose in that, Um, which is really about the, that's the message of the scripture is redeeming what's fallen in this world. So you have a time of loss and terrible tragedy, grief, but in this world, in our lives that we have left to live, we can redeem those to go out and help others. And that's really the, uh, that that's the secret to, uh, uh, was it C.S. Lewis say if you could? C.S. Lewis said if he could describe Christianity in one word, it would be others, and so mm-hmm. that's that's consistent with that. And uh, so that's the other thing is to is to the purpose is that the purpose you are going through this grief or the pain is that it's consistent with Scripture. Realize it's not a tearing down of your faith. It's it's that's it's what um, it is a building up of the faith. It's evidence of the faith. Right. But then also to um, allow it to 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 to, to Allow it to be there be a purpose in your life, and that is to comfort others and to minister to others through it. So, is that you, yeah? Is that no, that, I think that's good because it demonstrates that through intense pain, suffering, yeah. and grief, though the, those trials can push us forward to becoming the people we were meant to be. Definitely, and I've noticed in myself that it's really help me to have more empathy yeah on this issue to be more empathetic because people who haven't experienced that kind of loss and again Mm -hmm. to a christian it's not really loss it's just moving from one place to another and i I hear my brother saying in times where i'm on the ground get up the best is yet to come right get up i'll see you when you get here kind of thing and so it helps us obviously us in ministry you being a pastor over a church we get into this to help people. I was, you know, I I was a full-time nurse for six or seven years. Mm -hmm. And I originally got into that because of uh, helping people, seeing a need for that. And so going through these tragedies, which I think you can reframe your mind and rather than seeing it as a tragedy, Mm -hmm. seeing seeing it as a character building event in your life. Right. Uh, Let let me say, talk a little bit about um, the actual going through it because as you mentioned the coming in waves and the sadness right uh, that and it is very uh, for me as i mentioned i'm maybe just i'm possibly disposed towards uh experiencing that but it can feel almost debilitating i mean you don't even you don't want to get out of bed 
Uh, and at those times, again, there's a there was that movie that came out a few years ago uh, called Heaven Is Real. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and 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 I always thought, well, it's so corny. I mean, of, here's this pastor. He's telling me what I already know. You know, <laughs> of course it's real. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, but I'm, I'm not trying to speak to the movie necessarily, but that reality of, hey, uh, this is real. You know what you've been preaching and what you believe and and the reasons you believe it. J- uh, Revelation twenty one is a reality. That's coming. He will wipe away every tear. He, we will walk with him as our God. And and you and so it's in those times that faith continue. I don't want to act I, again. I don't want to say something like, "Well, I didn't believe before." Of course, I did. But f- the rubber of faith really hits the road of reality in right. those times. And um, but but through that, Donnie, I do want to say that something that was very, uh, I guess, comforting to me and as I ministered to my parents. And I, again, I don't want to sound like I don't want to sound um, dark or um, I don't know. Just so, so please understand, I'm not trying to to, to sound like I'm uh, I that death is a good thing or anything. But what, I, what I'm trying to say is when we struggle with someone who dies so young, you know, Scripture does speak about like um I think it's David dying to a good old age, right? So you have this idea in scripture. And so we do, we also, when someone dies at, at untimely or younger, there is a sense in, in total loss you feel and man, what could have been. And so that presents a special angle of grief that can really pierce the heart, right? And so one thing that helped me deal with that because again it can become overwhelming is to is to look at the, what the scripture the scriptures that speak about that and the scriptures at times i was mentioned in ecclesiastes it, it literally goes on to say that uh, he uh, envies uh the dead that have already died you know he's envious of them he would rather be them than even the ones who are not yet to be born this is in ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 2 now there's some debate regarding you know is everything in it, in Ecclesiastes, it's Holy Spirit inspired, absolutely. And this is a person who's who's expressing emotion. You know, he's been on the highs, had everything you could ever imagine, yet he experiences loss and deals with the vanity of life. And here he's saying, you know, Solomon, that in there are times where he, because of the frailty of this life, he envies those that have already um, well gone on to be with the Lord, Donnie, as you mentioned. And Everyone's going to die if the Lord doesn't come back. Again, please don't hear my words here. I'm not. Um, I'm not trying to glory in, in, in death or anything, but I am trying to just say that in some ways, uh, as Ecclesiastes states, um, those that have already died, they are almost in a, some sense we should be envious of them. As you mentioned, Paul was talking about. Hey, as he was alive, he was saying. I struggle with the idea of I want to go ahead and be with Jesus, right? But I still have things to accomplish here. So right. we do feel bad and we do grieve about, you know, the younger someone is. And, it, and there's no way to, to remove that. But something that can come alongside that is, is, to, is, to, is, to, is to realize the reality of Scripture is that they have gone through this veil of tears, you know, already. And there's a blessing to have passed through it and gone on. And uh, now they are comforted. And and now we are the ones that, you know, that, that are uh, in some aspect, we're the ones that are still in this and uh, in, in the, the dread in, in the, the 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 worst place. Right. It, obviously. But does that make sense? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I put together a slide speaking to that because I think it's an incredibly important point that we understand <clears throat> this is just an introduction to life. And in our introduction here, we get some good times and we get some bad times. Right. But it really is just a drop. It is just a drop. In in an ocean of eternity. Mm-hmm. Right. And, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll, I'll get to talking, man. I'll... No, that's, um, it, it brought me to right here. James 4.14. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Right. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Bob Duco. He's a very popular Christian radio host where I am. <clears throat> and 
uh, he's reached millions of people. Uh, he's a true blessing, but he journeyed through grief. He, he experienced the loss of his 17 year old daughter wow. who also heart just gave out. You could be perfectly healthy, the strongest person and we're really not promised tomorrow. Right. And so his his journey is it, through that is very encouraging. But he pointed out that is, is any of these sufferings and trials, the pain that we experience from this temporal vantage point, how much is that going to matter in a hundred years? And, right. When we're all in heaven, you know, our, our loved ones right. that, that have passed early, they've just made it to the party earlier than right. we have. Right. And that for me and talking with my parents, because again, they're coming from the standpoint of, you know, losing a child uh, the, and helping them realize, again, you don't want to speak to it like you're just being trite about it because it's not. You're, I mean, I, I was going through grief unimaginable as well, but I tried to tell my parents, look, uh, Bubba, uh, you know, he has gone to be with the Lord. He's lived the life God gave him to live. He's completed his you know, the, the race that he was supposed to run. And, um, in, in some ways, uh, I'm envious of him. Um, there's not a, well, what, you know, if you don't, it, as Christians, we don't have this, well, what could have been mm -hmm. because what, what could have been is what's still to come. Right. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the, the world to come where we talk about ruling over cities and, uh, who knows? I mean, it was first Corinthians, um, or a second Corinthians, first Corinthians chapter two, where Paul talks about no eye is seen, you know, uh, what, the, whatever we, whatever you lose out on this life, because maybe, you know, dying at a younger age, it can't even compare uh, at all to um, what is, what's on the other side or what's, you know, what, what's God has planned for those that love him. So there is no, I, there is no sense in which, well, you know, they, they didn't get to live their life. They kind of missed out on it because uh, the real life is the eternal life. And I know I, these words sound so, uh, they can sound, uh, I'm gonna say trite, but, but at the end of the day, what else do you have? This is it. This is the truth of, you know, I, I think about what Peter's, uh, Jesus says to Peter in John uh, six, well, you know, will you also go away after he talks about the body and, and blood and Peter doesn't understand what he's saying and many others have left. But at the end of the day, even if you don't, can't grasp everything, uh, Peter says, where else are we going to go? You got words mm -hmm. of eternal life. There's nowhere else to turn. There's nothing, Donnie, that will ever. I'm just telling you the truth. I know, you know, it's, there's nothing that will, you can't, grief is, uh, will crush you. I don't see, like I just mentioned to you, I don't mean to speak ill of anyone, but I don't know how an atheist, I don't know how they deal with these, with, with death and these types mm -hmm. of tragedies. Nothing at the bottom of everything. I don't care about therapy, even then sometimes, you know, certain medication and maybe at the base of all that, that's none of that's going to be effective if the, if the base of it isn't the reality of, of what the scripture tells us. And um, is that you, you follow me? And so for oh, me, absolutely. I, like, I had I to think, come to that. Go ahead. Well, I think you touched on an important point because I know a huge, a massive struggle that I've had. I know a lot of other people. It's probably very common are those thoughts of what if, right. or we didn't get to spend enough time Absolutely. with our loved one, or I should have spent more time with my, especially with us who lost siblings, yeah. you expect to live the rest of your days with you, with your sibling. Sure. You, you've basically been with them since birth. And so you feel you're going to be with them till the end. And so those questions of what if this, what if that, or why did Job ask all those questions? That's right. Yeah. And so there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, God knows the right. questions that are on our minds. God knows our heart. God knows that we're angry if, if we are. And so bring that to, to the Lord. And so I guess the, the question is then for people who would have that struggle of, of guilt and regret, because with a death that's so sudden and unexpected, you don't get that opportunity to mm -hmm. have final words here from this temporal vantage point or that final hangout or that final workout together conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what's the best way to approach those feelings and to navigate through those thoughts? Well, I think that no one has, you know, from some, from 
some viewpoint, we are, we would never have, have as much time with our loved ones that we want. Okay. So you, there's never going to be a moment. I've had enough of you. Now I'm ready for you to go. You know, let's, so we would always have those feelings. Right. And, uh, but the, I think in dealing with those types of thoughts is again, is to take them captive and to the reality, I come back to the, that uh, there's, we can't ever get as much time as we want with anyone that we love. Now, there may be a sense in which, uh, well, I could have done this. And maybe that's actually true for some people. I could have treated them better and done these things. That There's some sense in which uh, if it's, you know, if I'm not saying by you for any means, but if someone sets a certain situation, confess that to God, confess it to the Lord, give it to him, ask forgiveness. He's faithful and just to forgive you for that. And we know that, uh, again, we come back to Revelation 21. If we cry about those things now, what we, you know, what we missed out on or what we didn't accomplish or what we didn't take time to spend with somebody or we didn't treat somebody the way we wanted to. If that causes us to tear, if that's brings us to tears, then we know in revelation 21, that's all wiped away. Hmm. So it says, uh, so we, we will not experience that grief. Uh, he will wipe away every tear. That's why I love that. I, I don't know, man, it's uh, revelation in so well, if you can say it like that, mm -hmm. uh, he wipes away every tear. He wipes away every tear. There's no more crying. And so whatever thing causes us to cry now, if it's regret, if it's desire to be with our loved ones, which we will, we will be in heaven with them. We will know them. We will recognize them. There's, there's every indication the scripture uh, says that, right? And why wouldn't it be? Uh, the, the Bible sets up this model of a family and relationship and growing in that. Why would that not be an eternal relationship that only continues? So I guess uh, pastor to, to that, to, to kind of, branch off on that does the bible teach that when we because we understand that eventually there's the new heaven and new earth sure. that's what we're made for that's what we're designed for uh glorification the glorification of believers um but until then as paul says to be absent from the body and to be present with the lord mm -hmm. in the third heaven the spiritual realm do we recognize our loved ones there is there a type of reunion there or is that not until the new heaven and new earth when we're physically here? Yeah, that's a good question. Earth? And I would say that ultimately it doesn't matter, but let me go ahead and uh, address your question. I think mm -hmm. that maybe the, uh, uh, the story of Lazarus and Abraham, I know that you know there's the idea of them being in Hades and they're separated. Okay, I get that. But they still recognize each other. And the resurrection hadn't occurred at that point. So, uh, and then you have the story of uh, um uh, Saul, right? Calling up uh, the witch of Endor, um, uh, going to witch of Endor to call up uh, uh, Samuel. And he of Saul knew who he was talking to again. So that's before the resurrection, right? That's what you're talking about. What you're, so right. if, we were, if we're just going to go by what scripture has to tell us, then there's every indication that even before the resurrection, uh, we would uh, be able to, we would be in a place where, uh, in some sense, we would we would recognize each other. Uh, there's times in Scripture. I think in Abraham, he went to he went to sleep with his um, his father's, or maybe it was Isaac. Father. Yeah, um, I you get a sense in this uh, returning to your family, even your clans, almost. Uh, uh, it's not that's not the what it's getting at, but the, whatever the comfort we get from the idea of being with our physical family again. Uh, scripture alludes to that and it even um, explicitly almost teaches that as we see with being able to recognize people. So, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, King David, when he lost his, yeah, I'll see you baby, again. Yeah. He yeah. said, you know, my son can't come to me, but yeah, I, I, will I will go to him. Yeah, right. Must, and, must be speaking of the third heaven rather than exactly. the resurrection. Not uh, along with that. If you remember, uh, Samuel tells, uh, Saul, who I think was saved. That's another topic for another. Uh, we just had a study on that last night. Mm -hmm. but I agree. Samuel tells Saul, uh, you will be with me tomorrow. You and your son, Jonathan, who we have every indication to think was saved, right? Uh, he says, you will be with me tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So uh, a, a similar thing um, in the same place and uh, recognizing. Uh, so, yeah, even before the resurrection, that that's a reality that uh, we will experience. And um, I, I oftentimes wonder from this temporal vantage point as compared to the third heaven where God abode, where we would go when we die prior to the resurrection mm -hmm. uh, is time linear there, mm -hmm. you know, or is it, we, we await the resurrection, yeah. right? First Thessalonians four, that's our hope, new bodies, that, that reunion here on this earth. But 
in the meantime, from the eternal perspective, that that spiritual realm, mm -hmm. you know, is are, are, are those in that realm, are they also feeling like, oh, how much longer or right. uh, you know, we can't wait for the resurrection? There's, there's time working different. And obviously there's no pain, no suffering, just sure. your glory regenerated spirits there. And so there, there wouldn't be, I'd imagine, any feelings of impatience or anything that we would feel in the flesh. But I sometimes ponder how, sure. how that is. If you look at Revelation, and again, I'm this is for another subject, but there's time thing. Time is used differently in the book of Revelation, and it speaks about there was 30 minutes in heaven, you know, mm, yeah. uh, and then you have the souls under the altar in Revelation 6, I believe, that are uh, they they are souls. They're not bodies. Uh, so uh, and it says how long, how much longer, Lord? So there is this time. desiring, this longing for the for the completion of of uh, uh, of all things. and so. We being humans that are made of uh, spirit and flesh, right? Just to be one of those, uh, whether it's spirit and soul or just spirit, there's there's got to be a sense in which we want to be united. We want to be back in what it means to be a complete human. Resurrected and glorified, yes, but just to be one aspect of that is incomplete. So uh, longings don't necessarily, I mean, longings are not necessarily painful, uh, we, we, we long for things and actually right. it, it uh, could be like a, an excitement, a feeling of yeah, excitement. Yeah. Just yeah, expectation. Okay. Sure. Um, that's a great point, but uh, here's the crazy, here's something, Donnie, as you mentioned about, you know, what would my brother want me to do? And, uh, ultimately, we, you know, obviously we're talking about what would the Lord want us to do, but we're inspired by those that we know. And, and how right. would he, how would your brother react? How would those that have gone before us that we've lost, how would, would they want us to walk around, uh, mm -hmm. you know, grieving? Sometimes we feel that way. Honestly, I felt like, as I would, you know, you know, as those days would approach where I, maybe I, I didn't cry that day. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you, there was a sense of guilt there too. Well, shouldn't I be sad? And I just, I know from my own perspective, if the roles were different, I would be screaming at my brother, cut it out. You know, <laughs> yeah, you got right. things to do. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want you walking around you, you're not, there's no, get up and get going, man. This is the truth. This is the reality and, and live it out. And uh, yeah, I appreciate your sad. I'm gone. But mm -hmm. like you said, don't stay that way. Right. Uh, well, that makes me want to ask you. So in, in your journey, have you realized, because an aspect of this journey, you've lost your brother, your brother went to be the, with the Lord and, and same with mine, both unexpectedly and s similar reasons too. So I've realized that a lot of people, especially those that haven't dealt with grief, but grief comes to all because death mm -hmm. is inevitable. Yeah. They don't understand that the process is not necessarily, hey, you're going to get over it right. at this stage or it's going to take this long or you're going to be cured. Rather, and, and speak to this, grief is more so designing and building your new life around the yeah. grief. Yeah. So we I spoke earlier about feeling like grief or, or, or depression or sadness is like a heavy coat. Right. Uh, and that's what it feels like. And I think as you wear that and it's going to sound like a corny, uh, but it's just the reality. Uh, it's heavy at first. But what happens is you grow strong through it and you can right. wear it. And uh, it uh, so it's there. Right. It's not like you it, it, it is something you've acquired, but it's it doesn't weigh it doesn't stop you. Right. You've, mm -hmm. You're stronger now and you can move along with it. And, uh, you know, in Ecclesiastes, I hate to come keep coming back to this book, but it's a fascinating book. In Ecclesiastes, I think it's 118. Uh, the writer says that through knowledge comes grief. Um, so in a sense, we're we're gaining knowledge uh, when we experience the loss of someone. So knowledge, we always think, well, that's always good. Well, he says all knowledge that's gained is grief. And so. Um, with that said, uh, we take the grief, we take the knowledge that we've gained from that, again, to grow and, and to be able to comfort others with this knowledge that we've acquired. And yes, we gained it through grief, right? That's what the scripture says will happen. Uh, but uh, the purpose is to is the purpose, right? Uh, so uh, is that is that answer your question? Is that it, it does. And yeah. it, it brings me to. Um... Another verse in Ecclesiastes, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's Ecclesiastes 7, where it talks about, and I've got a slide here, it is better to go to a funeral oh, yeah. than to a party. Yeah. And right off the bat, a lot yeah. of people 
think, well, that's kind of odd. Yeah. What does the passage mean by that? What does God mean by that? Well, it's because at a funeral, life is put into its proper perspective. Right. We realize that we are not promised tomorrow. We realize that we got to live our best life now. We got to, yeah. you know, one thing I've realized is I need to, I want to serve the Lord with all of my heart, mind, mm -hmm. body, and soul. Yeah. And so funerals put life mm -hmm. into its proper perspective rather than at a party. Everything's good. Everything's mm -hmm. fun. Everybody's laughing. That's a mirage, You're right? Thinking I mean, about death, yeah. right? It, it's right. almost an illusion. Yeah. So the ch the verse I think you're speaking of uh, is uh, was Ecclesiastes seven two. It is better to go. Mm -hmm. I love this verse. Ecclesiastes is so musical, and um, lots of Bob Dylan has incorporated a lot of this uh, into his music. You wouldn't even recognize it unless you really kind of listen to his lyrics. But nonetheless, that's a whole nother podcast. But uh, verse two, it's better as you were talking. It's better to go to the house of mourning what than to go to the house of feasting, for that is the end of all men, and the living will lay to its heart. Yeah. Uh, so there's that there's that strange sort of uh, counterbalance to hey you know there's in a way again we life can come from death and purpose can come from death and uh, this is so consistent Donnie with Ecclesiastes four two and I didn't read it I just kind of mentioned it let me read it Ecclesiastes four two let me start with verse one. So I returned and consider all the oppressions that are under the sun. So here he's going back and looking at everything that's going on in this world and behold, the tears of such as were oppressed and they had no comforter. And on the side of their oppressors, there was power. So there's evil and things in the world, right? Uh, but they had no comforter. And then verse two, when I, uh, wherefore, because of these things, because of the fallenness of the world we live in, right? Uh, I praise the dead, which are already dead. What does that even mean? Well, I think he's saying we're all dead. Right. But mm -hmm. now I'm going to praise those that have already died, the dead that have already died. Mm -hmm. You see, hear, hear what he's saying here. Yeah. He, uh, we, we, we need to realize we're all dead in a sense because Adam didn't physically. I mean, he didn't top over, uh, you know, fall over and die the day that he ate. Um, there was a delay. Right. I right, mean, he. Right. But uh, so here he's saying, I praise the dead, which are already dead more than the living yet to be alive. Uh, it says, yes, uh, he is better than both of them. Right. Uh and, and again, without um, focusing on like death is a good thing, it's not, but dealing with reality is certainly a good thing. And um, it is it, for me, and I'm just saying for me, I, I reckoning with the idea of a life cut short and um, what could have been and in and and, and administering to my parents through that. I really had to, I really had to kind of, for me to, but show, just help them say, mom, dad, listen, uh, we're all going to die. You know, if we're lucky, we get 80 years, right? If, if yeah, that's the case. Right. And, and in uh, Bubba, my brother, um, he, he got out of here. He's gone. S mm. Sadly, I can understand that. But from one aspect, as, as, a, as the writer of Ecclesiastes says, we should envy him. He's not suffering anymore. He's not. He doesn't have to wonder about what's up ahead, and, and we still do. You know, in some ways, what's what's the next day going to bring in life? The challenges right. of everyday life. He has made. He's gone. He's done it. He's completed the course, and that is the only truth that can balance someone grieving. I think uh, the loss of a child as a Christian. And again, I have an experience that God forbid that I do, but I've ministered to my parents who have, and. Um, I don't know of any other truth that can ever give any kind of salve, if you will, to that pain than to say we should envy them. Is that, right. is that, is that, is that you follow? Yeah. Me? Well, we're stuck here. That's it. In this temporal earthly yeah. vantage point. And so we can't see beyond our dimension. We can't right. see the spiritual realm. And yet our loved ones, like, as you were saying with your brother who went to be with the Lord just a few years ago, which is such an encouragement to see fellow brothers in the Lord who mm -hmm. have, you know, grown stronger and are healing through this and understanding the process. So he is where Paul had a glimpse of the third yeah. heaven, which he had such a desire to depart to because what he saw, what he heard was unspeakable. Like no human words can right. iterate that. And so they've made it to their destination. I like to point out that it's not necessarily about quantity. It's about quality. Well, because again, yeah. if you're lucky, you get 80 years, right? And so 
those that have accomplished their mission. I, I think about my brother in, in his years, he lived m m more than me in a hundred mm -hmm. years. You know, the way he served in the army, he got saved in the army through his salvation. He got all of us saved, me, my immediate family, uh, married a beautiful Christian woman, three beautiful children, and he's served the Lord. He accomplished his fitness goals. And so he simply accomplished his mission before I have accomplished mine. That's why I'm, mm -hmm. if we're still here, we're still breathing. God has something for oh, us. Yeah. God has a mission that, that we still need to accomplish. And so some people can live to 80 years, 100 years, and they never accomplish anything of real eternal right. value. Or somebody could live to 30 or 40 or 50 years and they accomplish so much in terms of that which is uh, of eternal value, reaping life everlasting. Mm -hmm. That's what's important. Yeah, reaping life everlasting. And that, that brings us to another thing here, Donnie, in regards to uh, focusing on, okay, I'm here. God still has a purpose for me. Uh, I, I like I, I the, the doctrine of eternal reward, the doctrine of reward, the doctrine of standing before the Lord and giving account for what we've done. Hey, when you, when you go through grief and you experience losing someone, it just all the more reminds you your day is coming. And so, mm -hmm. uh, I don't, again, I don't want to sound uh, dark, but uh, living for the day you die is a good way to live in some ways. I mean, uh, because well, you it, have it that really, it really brings into focus the things that are important that are important. not be bogged down by the distractions or material things of this world. Right. How important family is. Right. Serving the Lord, helping others. Right. Now that you have that empathy towards those that are grieving, mm -hmm. God, I believe, maybe speak to this, allows us to go through things. This brings me back to the testimony of, of uh, Bob Duco, who I greatly respect. At first, he didn't know. He was angry. He wondered why his daughter of 17 years old oh, yeah. was taken so soon. But now years later, he sees that through that, millions have been helped, millions mm -hmm. have come to the faith, millions have grown stronger through their own trials because of his journey and his overcoming of his trial. Does wow. that make sense, Pastor? Yeah, definitely, absolutely. Again, it comes back to, you know, you've been comforted so that you can comfort, other, comfort others. And, and you know, there's, there's no education in the world, no degree you can go acquire that's going to gain you credibility with anyone you're trying to minister to more than experience. Right. Uh, yeah. If someone's gone through it, if they've been through that, uh, man, th the ear is inclined to hear what that person has to say. That's why Jesus Christ is the Savior. I mean, because, again, he he's he's experienced everything that we've experienced. Right. right. And, and in the same vein, same same way, if we can. But here's the thing is, as you go through these things, you go through this grief. You do have to turn it over to the Lord to allow that purpose to be worked out in your life. If right. you do shut down, if you do can just. uh I guess I would say wallow in the grief. I don't want to speak pejoratively about anyone that's really going, you know, but if, if you shut down, if you shut yourself off, we're not made to be isolate the, uh, to live the Christian life in isolation right. and grief can yeah, certainly help each other. Yes. But depression and grief, it, it does at times feel like it feels good to just be alone. I don't want to get out of bed. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, there's a fleshly aspect to us that says, I'm going to stay right here and I'm just going to be sad. Uh, and you have to, uh, my mom was so good at that. She just, you know how moms know something's all, if, if something's wrong with you, they just know. Uh, right. And she just, she, she brings, she brings it out of me, you know, get up, let's go. And uh, so as someone's going through that, to get to that point of being able to find purpose in it and to minister other minister to others, you, you, you can't um, get delayed in that or by simply taking all that grief on yourself. And right. just and just sitting in it because that is not healthy. It's not healthy for you, so a Christian that's anyone that's not going. Even for those who aren't experiencing grief, we're we're made to be relational. Uh, but also, all the more for the Christian, and even more so for those that are experiencing grief. Uh, well, you said it early, earlier. As you're grieving, going through your trial, those moments where you did feel some joy or comfort, you felt guilty. Yeah. Should I be feeling joy? Should I be feeling comfort? Or in times where you just want to cry or weep, you think to yourself, should I be doing this? Or maybe you mm -hmm. try to, well, I got to be strong, you know, because right. a lot of people will be strong, even though telling someone during the grieving process to be strong could be one of the worst things to say, because it's not about being yeah. strong. It's no, about right. allowing those it's feelings. about being weak. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. It's about if, if, if you got to cry, cry. 
Right. If, if you want to laugh, laugh. If you feel mm -hmm. joy, then allow those organic feelings to take place. Because I like to say grief is simply a side effect of love. Yeah. Yeah. But somebody could choose to not experience grief in their life. Okay. But then you can never love. You, you can never have children and love them. You right. can never have a spouse and love them. So it's that expression of mm -hmm. love. Even those thoughts where you're like, man, I wish I would have had one more hangout or one more. Yeah. That's Here, evidence of love. Right. right. I mean, it's, yeah. it's expression yeah. of love. And so if you reframe your brain that way right, and see that, hey, this is just the expression of love mm -hmm. or this is a moment in my life that is going to help me grow spiritually, mm -hmm. mentally physically then you're you're reframing your brain in a way where you can heal yeah better and to make those relationships that you have you still have all the more rich i think when you go through the tragic loss of someone unexpectedly and as you grow through that forgiveness becomes easier you know mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. to, to, because it's like am i really gonna uh allow that the death and allow that shock of of of, of loss to have this effect in the Christian life, forgiveness is not easy. I mean, it, it it's just not. And one thing that can facilitate that as we reflect on these, on, on, on losing someone uh, is to say, you know, I, in the past, I would hold on to that. But I realized that that is really in comparison. Or as I compare these things, it's nothing. And so allow you to become a better forgiver, if that's, <laughs> if that's a word, uh, it, 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 so it's uh, I, I hate to say, you know, God is about redeeming things. Right. God doesn't he doesn't replace things. He mm -hmm. um, he redeems it. Right. I mean, he redeems the earth. He redeems the ones that, that have been saved. And so in the in, in the um, am I making the my fuzz? Am I doing that static again? I get moving. I don't want to. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, you, you were probably good for the last 20 minutes. Okay. A little bit Sorry. of static now. But right. that, that, Let me stay still again. Uh, you're doing good, brother. Death, God is so victorious that he can take this, these, these death in the death, deaths that we experience in time in this life, and then he can have spring from that life. I mean, uh, and, and again, it sounds trite and it sounds uh, cliche, but it's absolutely the Christian faith. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. You mean losing a close loved one, even at a tragic young age, from that makes can make me, if I yield to the Holy Spirit continue to fellowship, hear what God's word has to say. I can bring life to others through that death, of course. And right. you know what? There's nothing, there's nothing more freeing and nothing more satisfying than, uh, than purpose coming from, uh, well, purpose coming from pain. Uh, right. There's no, no better way to deal with it than the than purpose coming from it. Right. I mean, and you've seen God, seeing fruit come from, that that experience in your life and god using it man i'll tell you what it there's no again i'm not disparaging uh the clinical side of of depression or grief but i don't know of anything for me personally that is more a healing than purpose and he and helping others right i mean that's the sermon on the mountain uh but uh i get to, i get excited i get talking and moving around i uh <laughs> i apologize that, uh, no, you're doing great. That's why I think these podcasts, especially from a Christian perspective, because yeah. I've watched hours and hours and hours of, you know, TED talks and presentations and lectures and podcasts on grief and going through trials, but not all of them are necessarily from a Christian perspective. And sure. I realize there needs to be more discussions like this on grief from the Christian perspective, yeah. which is the truth. And so that's why I think ongoing episodes and ongoing uh, discussions on this will be beneficial to those who have suffered or continue to suffer, who continue to journey and, and heal through that process. Yeah. And so with, with your loss from a few years ago, have you noticed that over the years you've looked to those memories or looked to pictures of your brother and now you have feelings of joy as a man, this was a really good, good time. Rather than at first, it's kind of like you look at those pictures and it's just like intense feelings of sadness. Right. I got to say, Donnie, I don't mean to be uh, discouraging. I get the sense that I will be able to. Okay. Yeah. But I'm still not there yet. Right. Uh, I, I'm not, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm not like, uh, it, I've God's brought me through it. But I still don't like looking at, uh, and I know, I, like I said, you get a sense that you will, you know, I will, but mm -hmm. I'm not there yet. I still can get very, 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 uh, you know, sad in those moments. Uh, 
if I was to somewhat I have, but so, but mm -hmm. I'm not there yet, but I, I know that, uh, that God, you know, that's, that's part of the grieving process. Right. And, uh, so I, I guess I'm not, I'm just not there yet, but, uh, I'm not there yet because I'm, I'm avoiding it. I just, there's, there's just part of me that I, I, it's just too, too much even still at this point, you know? Right. Uh, so. And that's why it, it's, uh, they do say it, it comes in waves yeah. and sometimes it comes in as oh, it the form of a tsunami and rather than internalizing it and thinking like, Oh, in this moment, I got to be strong. No, mm -hmm. that, that's, that's the grief. That's the side effect of love. That's the expression of the love you have right. for your brother, the love that I have for my brother and also the longing and the hope the gift. It's not like, well, mm -hmm. I hope my coffee is going to taste good today. You know, first Thessalonians four. No, I mean, it's a guarantee that it's we guaranteed. will see our loved ones again. And, and this side of, of the, of the veil, you know, there's still the, the aspect that we have to exercise faith, but I'm, right. I'm really an analyst in, the, in these regards. I, again, like you mentioned, being an overthinker, I'm, I'm so much of an overthinker and right. our flesh can get away from us. We can begin mm -hmm. to not, our flesh is so can get so far away from the reality of faith that I, I, this has been helpful for me. So maybe this will be helpful for someone. Uh, feelings again, they're, we're, we're not governed by God, God doesn't even judge us for our feelings. I, I don't even think our feelings are something that can come in line with our faith, but feelings are, are uncontrollable. I mean, and, uh, they're fallen. And so, uh, I, one thing that, that it's helped me when I've sort of kind of just gotten down is to go, wait a second. I didn't come from, I didn't just appear out of nowhere. You know, again, these are real, these are truths that of course, as a pastor, I know, right. But there is a God. Right. God exists. He has communicated, right? I, I tell myself, you know, you, you you okay with that so far? Yeah, absolutely. It has to be a God. There's no way there isn't a God. He uh, He's communicated. Well, where has he communicated? Well, he hasn't communicated in the Vedas or the Quran because just read them. You'll know that. I'm, I don't mean to be disparaging to someone's faith, but in, in some ways I am. There's no comparison between the Bible and these other quote unquote holy books. So he has communicated to us in his word. There must be a God. He has communicated. And what has he communicated? Well, I'm a John 3, 16 type of guy, okay? Uh, if I have believed in Jesus Christ, I get eternal life. And I go look and say, well, what is that eternal life described as? Well, Revelation 21, we're walking with God, with our loved ones that have believed in Christ and our tears are wiped away. So in those moments, going back through that process of going, okay, yeah, that's, I mean, as sad as it seems, the reality is, I've trusted in Jesus Christ and these tears along with everyone else's that's believed in, in the gospel, they're going to be wiped away. And if we don't have that, Donnie, what do we have? We don't have anything, yeah. right? What's Paul say? Eat, drink, and be merry uh, for tomorrow we die. Tomorrow right? we die. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so really is it, there's just two ways to think about it. You, you either uh, live in the uh, eat, drink, and be merry tomorrow we die, or Hey, we die and um, we're with the Lord. Right. I mean, right. So it sounds very simple, but there is a God. He's communicated. We've ex we, we exercise faith in the way he's asked to do, to do so. And we're all going to die. And one day our tears will be wiped away according to his word. And uh, yeah. so. And, and the evidence for God's word and for God in general. Oh, yeah. That's why yeah. apologetics. Uh, oh, yeah. Again, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but that's why your ministry is so important. Uh, and any, you know, any apologetics, apologetics touches every aspect of the Christian faith. Right. And so at times of, of true grief and depression, sometimes just a good lecture or debate even uh, that, that touches on these aspects of, of uh, building our faith up, building your faith up in any area affects all areas. Right. Amen. So um, it, it, apologetics is even a grief uh, ministry. Uh, and uh, you, you follow, you see what I'm saying? Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Building our faith up in the word of God. Well, what does that do? Well, now we even we, we experience the belief in it even more. And that still right. that includes Revelation 21. So uh, you, I, I, yeah. I think you grow spiritually. You the one thing I've noticed over the last couple of weeks is I've thought more about eternity. Sure than ever before. Like I've spoken to it, you know, and, and you probably have the same feelings. You, you preach on it or you speak to it or you think about it a little bit, you know what the Bible teaches about it, but until you have a significant loved one in heaven waiting for you, 
then you really think yeah. about it uh, deeply. Well, a lot more than you definitely you want to see him again, I mean, right? Yeah. And so, it, it, in a way, it 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 gets you closer to that spiritual exactly. Realm. It, it helps and you to be more faithful. Go ahead, brother. I I'm, I'm sorry. I I go, you finished <laughs> your thought, man. No, no, I, I'm done. That's good. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate your excitement. And I, I gotta say that my computer's at three percent. I can go get a. I'd have to go to the other building to grab a charger. No, that's fine. I, 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 you know what? The the time has flown by, and we're keeping these podcasts to an hour, anyways. And so maybe we'll we'll kind of wrap it, uh, sure. start winding it down here. I did want to get this in here because from the the Christian perspective, we understand that you know there, there's an appointed time for everybody. There yeah. is, um, as we were saying earlier, it's about quality, not necessarily about quantity, mm -hmm. and a lot of brothers and sisters, they, they accomplish their mission. They go to be with the Lord. Paul, he desired to be with the Lord. And so I've realized that you can make your own story. Yeah, we can't change the facts associated with events in our life, but what we can be the author of is how that story is told. Right. And so from our perspective, what we're uh, discussing here, what, what does this event in our lives because it's it's difficult for us from this temporal vantage point for our loved one it's not difficult mm -hmm. no pain no suffering they've accomplished their mission they've reached their destiny they made it to the party before us basically mm -hmm. and so what i wrote in terms of being the author of how my story is told yes i i'm not the author of the facts but i am the author of how my story is told right. and so what i put is this event will make me go deeper in my work I will work harder, dream harder, push harder. I will serve the Lord harder than I ever have. Mm -hmm. I'll help people to the best of my ability. And so I view my story and to those listening, everybody has their own story. If you don't have a scar, you're going to get one. Mm -hmm. And so our scars, we need to view those and those stories as a story of triumph, growth mm -hmm. and victory rather than a story of setback and yeah. defeat. And that's what the Lord wants for us. Absolutely. At first, uh, James chapter one, you know, count it all joy whenever you go through these trials, uh, because that's only building. I don't have the verse in front of me, but it's to build us up and, and to be conformed to what God wants us to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what's the temptation there? James only writes that not to not to just have a nice word. He's writing that because he realizes there's a temptation uh, to not count it all joy. Right. And I, I get I, when you say count it all joy. Well, I'm not it doesn't dismiss the grief part of it, but to view it from the aspect that good come, can come from it. And mm -hmm. the temptation in that context was that his congregation that James is writing to wouldn't do that. Right. Uh, so um, as you were mentioning, allow it to be, uh, to be a character building thing, allow it to conform mm -hmm. me more into the image of Christ. Uh, what does Paul say? I, uh, I press on, um, he says, I want to know the sufferings of Christ. Right. That's what he says in Philippians three, I believe. Um, so he's experiencing even that closely, he becomes even closer to the Lord as he goes through these things. Um, so as you mentioned, you can kind of write your story. You can't change the facts, but we, we do make these decisions and I get God's sovereignty. And that's a whole nother subject as well. But as it's lived out in our own lives, will we yield to the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to work out in us what his purpose is uh, through these situations? And God can bring life and triumph. And that's what he wants to do right? Uh, through these, through tragedy, through death and uh, through loss. Um, and uh, yeah, exactly what you're saying. It's, uh, it, it can be, it become, it keep, it become it, these, I've heard it say that uh, these tests become testimonies and uh, pains purpose. And it sounds trite. I know it sounds cliche, but uh, it's absolutely, there's nothing else. We can offer no other hope than that. Right. And, uh, maybe the next time we get together to discuss, because my computer may die in a moment. I know it's probably a few questions that are on the table in regards to uh, infants, because uh, people, you know, are young children. Uh, can I just say something to that very briefly? Of course. Yeah, uh, go ahead. I think that uh, there's a mystery to all of this, but I would say to anyone that's lost a child, even uh, children, I think there is an age of accountability. I don't know exactly what it is. But to anyone who's experienced that loss, I think that uh, you you have to remember it was Genesis uh 18, 20, I believe it's where uh, Abraham says, well, not the judge of the earth do right, right? God's good. Uh, you have the, the David saying that he will be with his his a son or his infant that died, right? He's, I will be, I will go to him. And uh, so I would say to anyone that's experienced that loss, there's more that could be said about it, but uh, God's merciful. These we, we don't have, we're not filling up hell uh, by uh, 
uh, infants dying and whatnot. So uh, I know that could be a whole show by itself, but I thought there may be somebody who's thinks, well, they haven't talked or haven't touched my source of grief. And I would just say that I can show you from scripture. May right now isn't the right time, but uh, you'll, you'll see your loved one. I, I believe that's the testimony Amen. of scripture. So, and the heart of our God. So. Um, Amen. Well, I think we know what our next podcast will be. Ho yeah. Hopefully sooner rather than later, because uh, brother Anthony, you've been an encouragement. Thank you. This for podcast me. has been We're praying for you, Donnie and uh, praying for your family. And I'm down here in Corpus Christi, but if there's ever anything I can do, uh, please, please let us know. Right. If you ever want to come down to the coast down here, you've got a place to stay and uh, I'll take we'll you up on you, that. You up. Absolutely. So sounds like a blessing. Okay. Well, we'll chat again. You've been a huge yeah. encouragement, motivation and blessing during this time as you've had your own journey and you continue to journey through this and your role model. And I pray that you've also been an encouragement, motivation to those listening. Uh, you and I will talk. We'll, we'll discuss what our next podcast could be. I think Age of Accountability, something to do with that, maybe OSAS. And yeah. so, Pastor, thank you so oh, much yeah. for doing this. God bless you. God bless you. God Donnie. bless everybody in the audience. God bless this and ministry, too. Thank you very much. We'll see you, bro. God bless. Bye.